constantly uh, am being asked to do a video on how to change the mains cable on a, a pair of uh, GHD Platinum or Platinum Plus irons. Now this model is not generally repairable. Uh, if you have genuinely cut through the mains cable uh, there and you had no other faults before that then it may be worth changing the mains cable. If they flash uh, and do nothing else uh, then the mains cable is not at fault and uh, you will I'm afraid have to scrap them and replace them. No parts are available uh, apart from the mains cable that we stock and recently I've had a number of requests where somebody has uh, cut the cable, the cat's chewed it, the dog's chewed it or whatever and I have agreed to uh, replace the mains cable for them uh, but uh, the proviso is that if there are any other faults with the irons I cannot repair them uh, so uh, that's the situation there. If that happens when they've sent them in for a cable change they can pay the postage and have them sent back. I charge £10 for postage and handling if they're not repairable or I can um, recycle them and uh, uh, the customer will not need to pay uh, anything at all. So if they do anything, light up, bleep, flash, anything like that it is not the cable, 100% not the cable. <laughs> but if they were working perfectly and you've cut the cable and it's clearly physically in half, uh, then yeah, why not uh, change the cable and save them? Okay, so you're going to need two tools a uh, Phillips screwdriver, I think this is probably a number two, I can't remember. It's the one I use on GHDs all day long. And you are also going to need a 0.1mm uh, frame, I'm sorry, screen disassembler. Uh, you can buy them from us, you can buy them from eBay, uh, you can buy them direct from China. So lots of options there. Now at first sight, uh, this is not obvious how uh, they come apart, um, but simply put, this top part is a cover. This whole part here will come off. Same with the other side, that is purely a cover that presses on to the main arm here. Uh, what you'll need to do is, with the screen disassembler, just look along. Uh, it doesn't always fit perfectly, so if you can see a tiny little gap, just wedge that in there. Let me just show you a little close-up there, hopefully you can see that. So it's just gone between the cover and the arm. Uh, get a fingernail down the end and just see if you can gently prise it far enough apart so you can get a couple of fingernails underneath there and put some pressure in there and with that bit of pressure work your way along like so and eventually that will lift off. Now if you look inside you'll see all these little plastic uh, pieces and they actually clip into these holes in the actual main arm. Now it's very common to break <laughs> one or two of these so don't be surprised if that happens. Uh, if you're repairing these during the winter months or you're in a really cold room just try and uh, warm the plastic up first, pop them on a radiator in the house or gently warm up with a hairdryer just allows the plastic to become a little bit more flexible um, when, uh, yeah, when it's warmer compared to freezing cold. Cold plastic really does like to snap. So take that off the side with the logo, the name and uh, model number, uh, sorry, model name is on the non-switch side. And we'll spin these over and do the same again, just looking for a little gap. We don't want to scratch anything. Yes, you could use a flat bladed screwdriver, but you are going to damage the plastic and if you slip, you're going to be taking this nice coppery finish straight off and that is not going to go down well with the owner. So again, prise it apart enough so you can hold that apart with two fingers. And slide along. If it doesn't want to give, you can always reverse try the other side. I don't generally need to, I would have just snapped this off normally, but uh, if you can work 
both ways, fine, this is the way I would normally work. But we're stiff this one, so we may well break one of the plastic clips, but I'm going to try not to. This side really is stuck on there really well. Oh, there we go. Now, what did we break? Mm, well, much to my surprise, we didn't break any of the clips. That is uh, fairly <laughs> unusual. And we'll put that so, to one side. We are now finished with that. And now all we need is the little Phillips screwdriver. Take this opportunity to wipe all of the dirt out. The dirt is unbelievable how much it collects between the cover and the arm. You can see it all ingrained here and around the tip. So I would always just run a towel, rag, whatever you've got uh, along all the way along, it just helps reassembly if, if the dirt builds up enough and the, uh, the covers might not pop back on and line up quite as nicely as you wanted. Uh, same with that, if that looks dirty in any way just wipe gently around the edges. Do not be rough if the cloth catches one of these little plastic pieces they will snap off. Okay, so it doesn't really matter which side you start from. Um, there are numerous screws, one, two, three, four, and if you peel back the rubber boot, there is a very small one just hiding in there. You do not need to touch that one. Uh, try not to pull this silicon boot around too much because they do have a tendency to snap. Uh, you can super glue them in place, but obviously for a nice finish, you really don't want to uh, damage that. So just leave it alone if, uh, at this stage. So undo the screw here and uh, we'll put that there. Undo this one and that will allow you to remove the cover here. Now be careful on this side because this switch cover holds the switch and it also uh, is uh, wired. So if I just bring that out you'll see there are two sets of wires, one going to the switch one going to the little buzzer. The switch one here you can pull this out. The buzzer wire pulls apart here, I don't know whether you can see that, there just pull that and then the switch one pulls off there like that and then you can remove that and put it to one side. Now the reason we don't really want to look at these is because GHD changed from copper wires uh, to this thin film uh, method of wiring everything together. It is extremely fragile and do not be surprised that when you've taken these apart, changed the cable and reassembled them, that you've got another fault. Um, it's very easy to damage uh, these connections. Really not a very nice uh, thing at all. So uh, yeah, so we now we move over to the other side. Again, it is the two screws and they're exactly the same size as the other side so no, nothing to worry about there getting them mixed up. Uh, this cover will again just lift away. You can see dirt all down there so again I'd be cleaning the dirt off of these before reassembling them. Now at this point you will have ceramic plates floating around and the circuit boards all floating around. Uh, so try and be really careful and uh, not to bend these around too much. You could, let me think, uh, no we're going to have to have the arms off. I'm just think, wondering if there was a nice way to secure everything so it doesn't move around too much. Um, I'm going to try it. I'm just going to lie these down. I'm going to grab an elastic band. And I'm just going to see if we can 
hold these together if we can get this tight enough let's see if we can put elastic band around there hold the uh, hold everything together and now we can work on the other side without all this flapping around too much now um, this comes out from this end unfortunately the socket that this cable plugs into which is inside this metal part um, has two little clips that spring out once you push it in it gets so far in it goes like that and any amount of pulling is not going to get that out I've, <laughs> I've seen people uh, cut the cable out they've cut the um, plastic insert they've been trying to get all the socket out and, and generally end up <laughs> making a, a right mess um, this black piece of plastic here is part of the insert this is not this is obviously the cable and the little black piece between there and there is the insert you do not want to be trying to prise that out because uh, you will damage it it will not pull out without further work and that further work is to remove these two screws and what they're holding in place is um, I don't know whether you can see it in here there is a metal whether you can see it or not I don't know if it's focused there's a metal plate in there that these two screws go into and you've got to take that out yeah let me just double check yeah you're going to have to take those out too so we're going to take these two screws out and then that metal plate is going to literally fall out so make sure you've got a photo of its orientation it's pretty obvious once you've done you know one side uh, but if you're not paying attention and it falls out without you looking you might come a cropper to putting it back together again so now you can lift that up and you can see the orientation and if we just shake it it will fall straight out now at this point the arm will just pull straight out we're going to have to do the same the other side We even need to do that. I wonder if there's a better method. Could we prise that piece out? I'm just pulling these little silicon rubber bits that I said we don't want to damage. Just wondering if we can, if there's any way we can get that out. No, we can't because that plastic uh, goes. Um, think no we're gonna to have to actually unscrew that as well I think yeah look let's do the other side first let's go and do these two screws they could not have made a repair to this model any harder if they had tried um, with the horrible flimsy thin film connection method right so again lift up pull that arm off you can see that metal piece there and now we're getting better access but actually we do have to undo those little screws these ones are quite tiny compared to the others so you can't get these mixed up you can see how small that that is and then we'll go over to this side. It's definitely helped um, elastic plastic. <laughs> I put in those ceramic plates together with elastic bands. That is uh, less flapping around, less flapping around than normal. <laughs> right now, the next stage is we need to get this plastic piece out to expose the connections. Now that's probably far enough and I'll just show you inside because there are some silicon pieces in here that are just going to fall out um, and very often they will break as well so first piece to come out is 
this piece as you can see there you can see how that goes in and follows the shape of that hinge assembly and then if we look in there again you can see just in there there is another piece of silicon and that is pushed and held in place in fact this is the piece that normally breaks so I'm just going to push that out of the way there we go so again this the live and neutral wires go through those slots here if you want to call them slots and the prong goes the other side so that's a way to remember there's a big hole there and that goes in to the plastic and the two slots go into the mains cable now at this point you can see that side and that side the two plastic pieces of this insert that you need to uh, press together so if you reach in with two fingers side by side and squeeze those plastic pieces you can then see the way that's come out squeeze the plastic inserts so you'll we'll show you that more closely when I take this out and uh, just slide that out you might have to push some of this back to make the wires long enough but you should be able to get it just out far enough to split this collar in half it's in two pieces and if you can uh, it's just catching on there and it's gone back in fully so squeeze the sides and pull see if we can get that apart now yes we can so take the two halves out see the piece there that bit there is the piece that is it's got to be bent in and when it's pushed in it springs back up and you can see it's quite a chunky bit of plastic with a very flat edge and that is catch you know it's gone in behind the metal of this uh, hinge assembly so it will not pull out and of course you've got exactly the same on the other side and you can see how that bends in so do not damage this you can then see the cable and the socket pull the cable out tiny little bit of contact grease this has got plenty in here already and then finger behind the socket perhaps Oh, it's quite a tight fit and push it in so you've got uh, no gap there now at this point we're going to have to try and get the insert back in place you can make this a lot easier by actually unscrewing the mains wiring uh, if you look the black and blue wires on that board are screwed in place you can unscrew them uh, but it can get a bit confusing when all of this is in bits so um, yeah I tend uh, not to do that so we'll get one side in first that's good and then pull out and get the other side in whoops and both falling apart so let's do that again you see, you see the problem with this. <laughs> this is not a model that you'd really want to be working on <laughs> every day. It's a hateful, hateful model. Let's see if we can get. Yeah, we go. We pushed it back in much further this time. <clears throat> like I say, it is easier if you uh, prefer to take. It mains wiring off if I just feed that back in like so that's going to be better as well right there's one spin over and get the other side in that's it we've got both halves in and we are now good to get that in now here we go we've got the plastic lined up both sides and if we push you'll hear it click there you go that was that click and now that is oh I was going to say locked in there solid but 
let's have a look. Yeah, it is. Um, but those um, the plastic tags that have sprung out are also held in place when that is back. So at this point, we're going to put this back so the mains cable goes through it. Again, real fiddly to get this in. Again. It would be a very big temptation to leave this out, I think, uh, <laughs> by most uh, people. in but it just wants to keep falling out so that is a problem and then the other piece up there and we'll feed that in through there you really can see why this is a hated model film lines up correctly if you don't get that lined up it is not going to go in properly happening is the part of the thin film has gone around too far and it is not now lining up at the top there so we are going to have to pull that around and this is where this damage to this can occur easier than this. There we go, that's going back. I haven't put the silicon rubber pieces back in, but hopefully you're going to get the idea. I don't really know why that won't go in. And again, I think it's because the piece there is not correctly lined up. What a horrible, horrible model this is. Okay, finally. So you can see that the slot in the metal there has to be where the slot in this thin fill material is. And uh, same the other side. It wasn't going in because this 
whole thing had moved around slightly so too much was coming out here compared to uh, the top. Now that we've got that it would be nice if we could just pull that apart slightly pop in the silicon is get that bit back in but it doesn't want to do it <laughs> it's a hateful piece of tat could have repaired 10 pairs of normal GHDs by now so let's do it upright and see if we get a better result when the bits can't actually fall out one again with too much of that showing through there and we've got to pull that around otherwise it will not be going back anywhere
Is that got a little slot in it that goes in there? Hmm. They're very close there. Very close. Now, as I was expecting, that has now split and it is not going to go where I want it to go now, I don't think. Basically, it's got to get right under. There's a piece of there's two pieces of plastic with holes in. I don't think we can now get that into one side because it's. Oh, yes, we have. Yes, we have. I think. Yeah. What a stupid design this is. Very close to going in now, but not quite. I think it's just the mains cables getting caught. Again, they've got to be in exactly the right place. There we go. God damn, finally. <sighs> okay, so we should be putting those little screws back in Now, these arms are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which way around they go. Just work out that. I think we will do that up. Sorry, I know you can't see very well, but I'm just pushing that into there and uh, pushing that plastic back as far as I can get it. All these screws are actually doing, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so we need to just get that out of the way. We would need to put the metal piece in and uh, notice it's got captain tape one side, nothing the other. On this one, nothing. The captain tape goes against the um, mains wiring here, so we have got to get that in there. like that and then that will come down and that mains wiring is over that captain tape 
so it, uh, if the wires should disintegrate somehow, not possible, but um, it uh, would then make possibly the metal parts live, so it's a form of double insulation, um, although not very good in my opinion, relying on a bit of captain tape never made much sense. And uh, same here, we need that under there. Let's just feed that down first and then we'll pop that in there. And pop this plate back in. If we can get it there. Come on. Yeah, nothing wants to go together tonight, does it? There we go, that's in. So we've got two more screws. point remove the band make sure the silicon pieces are there and that can go back in like so the other side a little silicon piece needs to go back in the mount spin that over oh, bugger. I'll tell you what let's do it one side at a time so we're going to put that in place we're going to put the cover back on, which in this case is the non-switch cover. Oh right, so you've got it pushed all the way in and the plates are in place. And these screws can go back in. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, you couldn't make it up. <laughs> I have to be honest, this is the worst disassembly and reassembly that I've ever <laughs> managed on these. I don't know whether it's because I'm tired or it's, you know, it's half past six, it's not exactly late. <laughs> ah dear. And the same the other side. Slot the board in. Make sure that is lined up. Now this time we have a small problem because we've got to get uh, these back in place. So what we're going to do, I suspect it might be easier just to do these. Uh, out of the irons uh, that way round obviously so we're going to put that in there and click that in place and then we're going to grab the other one sorry you can't really see this um, I might grab the pliers here and just spin that around and line it up and clip it in place Spin it back, close but not quite, and there we go, that's now in. So if we can put the whole assembly back in without disconnecting anything, that would be very pleasant. Tuck under that end, and without pinching any of the wires, which we have just done. There, now we're not pinching anything. So two screws, <laughs> I 
Okay, so there we are, uh, back together, cables changed. The arms, on switch arm is the one with the name. So we are just going to clip that gently back in place, make sure that rubber, silicon rubber piece lines up all the way around like that. Just a warning, these will not be 100% when they go back. There might be a little bit of silicon rubber that just doesn't seem to quite line up. Like that bit there, why is that? Yeah. Well, look, there we go. Uh, now, this is a 40 pair of Platinums that I bought off of eBay for about 15 quid purely for uh, anything I might break whilst changing a cable, uh, or, you know, of a customer. So I, I don't think these do anything other than the error tone. Well, this, yeah, there we go. You just get the error tone with these and the flashing red. If they do this, you're stuffed. Um, nothing you can do. They are knackered and they certainly don't need a new cable <laughs> that is not the fault but at least they're exactly the same as they were before so yeah apologies that that has gone on uh, for so long um, but uh, hopefully you get the idea of how involved changing the cable can be on uh, on this model it really can be a, a proper pain in the backside and uh, yeah, that's about it. This um, we recycle all of the cables. We keep all of the uh, fuses and the fuse holder, and the plug goes off for recycling as well. And uh, yeah, this will just be slung in a drawer in case we ever need any bits for a customers that we have um, inadvertently lost or broken something whilst changing their um, cable. So, yeah, sorry that dragged on, but uh, I think you get the idea that this is uh, not something to be undertaken lightly. Catch you later.